Hello, people of the internet, my name is Johnny, and welcome back to Five Nights at Freddy's News. I said in my last couple of videos that even with the recent controversy around FNAF, the franchise Scott, you know, his retirement, all of that, I'll still be making FNAF videos. And hopefully all of this news can bring some positive energy to your day. Because we do have a lot of things to look forward to. So honestly, let's not waste any more time. I've been gone for like the entirety of the month basically with FNAF news, so I've missed out on a lot of stuff, I apologize. Before we hop into it though, look at this number. Look at how close we are to 20,000 subs. Please, if you are not subscribed, please do so. Or just double check, it takes like two seconds. Just scroll down, click the button. It's, I wanna get to 20k subs, man, please. Anyways, let's start off with some news on the Fazbear Frights book series. On June 5th, again, I told you I've been late to all this, the most common words and phrases for the Fazbear Frights number nine, the puppet carver was revealed. As you can see, you have a lot of names, Jack, Mole, Porter, Peyton, Colton, Sage, Crutchfield, which if I had to take a guess is a town name, and then you have the Ticket Pulverizer, which appears to be one ward. If I had to take a guess, I'm guessing that is the arcade machine that we are going to learn about in the second story. The summary for the puppet cover goes as followed. Consumed by failure, desperate to keep his kitty pizzeria from bankruptcy, Jack lets his animatronics tech pitch him a new invention that might just give him some perspective. Frustrated by an unfair arcade game, again that could be the ticket pulverizer, Colton throws himself into re-engineering the device at any cost. Marley's best friend goes missing on a tour of the Freddy's Pizza Factory. She knows what really happened, but her guilt isn't the only thing threatening to eat her alive. The book comes out on July 6th, however, I do have some insider info. Sometime later on in the week, I'll be releasing a video which is very spoiler heavy, so keep that in mind if you see it. And in that video, I'll be summarizing all three of the stories, including the epilogue in the puppet carver before it comes out. So if you don't want to miss that, again, hit that subscribe button. Moving on now, we have a three page preview for the 10th book in the Fazbear Fright series, Friendly Face. I think I'm allowed to show these on video. We're gonna find out. It is a very quick preview. Again, it's only three pages, six technically. The preview is told from the perspective of a boy named Edward, and something noteworthy about Edward is that he is a teenager. People are pointing this out a lot because apparently Andrew makes an appearance in the book, and Andrew is supposed to be eight. However, the preview in the book makes it very clear that Edward is a teenager, and he's not a child like Andrew. The summary for the book goes as followed. Act in haste, repent at leisure. After losing his friend in a terrible accident, Andrew can't spend his money fast enough on a happy companion guaranteed to keep his friend's memory alive. Mott quickly flushes his brother's creepy new pets, but the creatures have other plans. Eager to put her classmates in their place, homecoming queen Jessica doesn't stop to double check her homework, reprogramming a defunct animatronic. We got a ways to wait for this book, it comes out on September 7th. Moving on to some news about the ports, unfortunately nothing of the fanverse just yet. However, we do have an update on Ultimate Custom Night, Sister Location, and also so all of the ports. Earlier in the month, Click Team said we are pushing FNAF's Ultimate Custom Night update for Xbox and Switch today. Please see the change log below, still working with Sony to get the same patch released on PlayStation 4. Unfortunately, it seems like the update is still not out on PS4 just yet. We are releasing today a patch for Ultimate Custom Night on Xbox and Nintendo Switch. Please read below for the changes, we are still working with Sony to deliver the same to PlayStation 4. The update includes the following added controllers sensitivity options, added a pause screen, added cheats, moved the flashlight from A to B, fixed pressing on helpy, fixed all off button shortcut, fixed the speed of adjusting the AI levels, and fixed the faz coin sometimes not appearing on the cameras, fixed missing sounds for Afton and Rockstar Foxy, fixed the warning showing on the counterintuitive side of the screen, removed the ability to cheat challenges, for Xbox One they added a keyboard and mouse support, and for the Microsoft Store it is now available on Windows 10 on PC. A massive update, one that we have been waiting on for about a month, so I'm super, super happy that this is finally out. I can't wait to hop back into UCN on Switch. However, there has been an issue. That's right, there was an issue among us. They tweeted out earlier in the month, we received a ratings issue for FNAF Ultimate Custom Night on Sony PlayStation 4. We have corrected the issue and have resubmitted for review. It is scheduled to start the review process with Sony on the 16th of June. I will provide more information as it comes to me. Right now it is the 21st and there has been no word from Click Team. And also, a similar ratings issue for FNAF Sister Location on Sony PlayStation 4 was uncovered. We have corrected the issue and have resubmitted for 
for review. It is scheduled to start the review process with Sony on the 17th of June. And once again, there has been no word from Click Team just yet. Some very interesting news from Click Team was revealed the other day about the ports. They said Click Team is knee deep in providing full subtitles to all seven titles. We are currently rigging UCN with the new code. We are still deciding on the languages included once the code is in place. So that is some very unexpected but also very exciting news for all of the foreign FNAF fans. Moving on now, we have FNAF AR. They made a tweet the other day saying the wicked tides and their strange denizens are moving back to the sea, but gears are whirling and there's a tick talking. We're not sure what all that could be. And actually on Thursday, June 17th, the day that the brand new skin and the tick talking event was supposed to release, FNAF AR put out a tweet saying hello all. We know a lot's been going on in the community in the past week, referencing the whole Scott drama and him retiring, which I believe was the same day. We'll still release the Scream Punk event in coming weeks, but thought it was best to give everyone time and space this week. So we won't be launching the event this week. We appreciate all of y'all deeply. Now, I'm not gonna lie, I think this tweet is acting a little sus. I appreciate them giving, you know, us FNAF fans to, you know, like, calm down because of all the drama and what's going on with Scott, but the fact that they said the next coming weeks, I understand, you know, like, this is a, a huge deal, you know, Scott created the franchise seven years ago and he's retiring, but delaying it by weeks? That's, that's a long time. Now, it is a brand new week this week, you know, it being Monday, so I don't know if they're gonna release it on Thursday this week, or if they're gonna, again, keep waiting all these weeks. It makes me hope that they're maybe working on a new character right now, and that's why they need a lot more time. Because while I do think that they are taking time off for the fans, I also think that they are taking time off to work on some other things. But who knows, uh, puzzle pieces have been releasing a little bit. They stopped now, of course. But we're just gonna have to wait and see. Uh, the first skin appears to be a Blora skin. Here are the puzzle pieces. Moving on to some news about FNAF Plus. We have Phil Morg tweeting out, might as well put this out now. Unfortunately, Scott Cawthon will not return to voice phone guy in FNAF Plus. There were plans for a long time, but he ultimately declined once I approached him to record his lines. Thought Thought it'd be an appropriate time to break the news to everyone. As for who will, I don't know. Certainly not going to be me, that's for sure. This kind of sucks since Phone Guy is a huge part of FNAF 1, but I'll have to walk around it and see if I can find something that will hopefully make up for this loss. We'll see. So, some very unfortunate news. Scott not voicing Phone Guy in FNAF Plus. People are chalking this up to the recent drama. I don't think that's the case. Based on how Phil warded the tweets, it makes it seem like this happened a little bit ago and he's only breaking the news right now because Scott on everyone's mind. So either Scott wasn't interested because he was looking to retire soon, or I don't know, he just didn't want to do it. Maybe he can't really do Phone Guy that well anymore. He hasn't done it since, oh boy, 2015? FNAF 3? I'm not sure. It's some very unfortunate news. I hope Phil can find a, a suitable replacement. I'm sure he'll keep us updated uh, because I was, I was really looking forward to Phone Guy, but it seems like he's gonna go for some either alternative voice or just a complete, you know, different guide. Moving on to Kane Carter and Pop Goes Evergreen. Earlier in the month, Kane tweeted out, there's a near endless supply of unseen and quote, lost content from old Pop Goes projects that I have access to. If there was enough demand, I might make a second Twitter account dedicated to it on Pop Goes' fifth anniversary or something. No longer canon, but I know there are fans. And as you can see, you have uh, Spring Bonnie and I believe JJ up on the show stage. I'm not all too familiar with all the Pop Goes lore and all that stuff, so sorry if I don't know what's going on or who some characters are. Next up you have, again, I don't know these characters, so forgive me, but you have this dude, this green glowy dude, then you have some sort of mini game it seems like, and then you have whatever the heck this terrifying creature is. <laughs> and actually, three days after that post, Kane made another post saying, I've decided to follow through with this. On the 26th of June, which is in only five days, I'll begin sharing previously unseen and obscure content from the original Popgo series to this profile. At Lost Popgo's, it will be linked down below if you want to go give it a follow. Feel free to follow in advance. Hope you guys enjoy. So there you go. If you want to see some lost and obscure content from the original Popgo series, go give that uh, page a follow. Again, it'll be 
link down below. About a week and a half ago, Kane made another tweet saying bad timing because I was going to share this anyway, but I sent Scott an update on Evergreen last night. With previews for four environments in the game, he said, thanks for the update, this game is looking amazing so far, really great stuff. Only a couple days ago, Kane posted a image of the UI screen for Pop Goes Evergreen. He said, been playing around with a menu UI stuff for Evergreen. Last time I worked on this was like August of last year. The left redacted is for the other collectibles, and the middle one is for the post-night gameplay sections. Mini game replacements, still a work in progress, just experimenting. He also replied with, here's a yellow version with the kitchen, for fun. No idea if this would happen in game, or if we'd even use the cameras for the background, lol. So that is the work in progress uh, menu UI for Pop Goes Evergreen. I think it looks amazing. All of these fan games, I'm looking forward to immensely. Now I do have some more updates on the Fanverse Initiative, one out of Flunky's Theory, however, it's kind of a interesting topic. So I'm gonna save that for a future video, which should hopefully be out maybe tomorrow or the next day. So if you want more news on the Fanverse Initiative, again, hit that subscribe button. But we're not done with Pop Goes just yet. Kane provided some info on the game modes that are gonna be in Pop Goes Evergreen. He said the premium edition, which if you guys don't know, the premium edition is just paid for. Meaning if you get it on console or mobile, and I also believe that Pop Goes Evergreen is going to be on Steam. So the premium edition of the game has three other game modes planned at the moment. New Game Plus, which is the advanced gameplay with experimental mechanics. New Game Minus, nostalgic gameplay with the original mechanics. And then Challenges, a long list of unique single night challenges with phone rewards. And finally, I'm very late to this, but Kane Carter revealed the official full render for the brand new design for Stone the Crow. And here it is. I think it looks absolutely amazing. As you can see, he's holding the walk-in and drive-through sign, and he's also got a little red scarf on. Ken also provided a drawing of stone from the Pop Goes Pizzeria, and then this terrifying banner of stone in front of the Pop Goes Evergreen logo. I think he looks amazing. I think he looks especially terrifying in that third picture. However, we do have more surprises for Pop Goes coming very soon. Kane the other day tweeted out, Oh, and also, we're in the midst of setting up something very cool for Darko's upcoming charity stream, which is also on Pop Goes' fifth anniversary. It's not huge, but it's very unique. It could go tits up, but fingers crossed it works out how we're planning it. So some very exciting news coming soon. And in case you don't know what he's talking about, Darko made a tweet saying 24-hour charity stream for the Trevor project Saturday 26th of June. I release a schedule closer to the date. Now this was announced during the whole, you know, Scott political drama about all his donations and such, but Daco did reveal that this was planned way, way, way before that. However, Scott did reply, and he did say, I will be there. Now, there's been a lot of mixed reactions about this. Some people are thinking, oh, he's only doing this to, you know, make up for who he donated to. And then you have everyone else who's like, well, he's always at Darko's charity streams. In my opinion, I think he was going to be there anyways. I really don't think that this is going to be some, like, you know, oh, he's only doing this for, like, a redemption story or something. Oh, I'm so sorry. I donated to these people here. Let me do this in return. I don't think that's the case. I just think this is kind of bad timing. Uh, but yeah, mark your calendars, the 26th of June, 24-hour charity stream. My gosh, Daco, bless your heart, man. I don't know how you can do 24 hours. And finally, let's talk about scottgames.com. So, I'm sure you haven't missed it by now. Scottgames.com was updated the other day with Scott's retirement letter, and only a couple days after that post, the site went completely blank. Now, we're kind of used to Scott Games having something on there. If there's no image, at the very least, it has the ScottGames.com logo. This time, however, it's very different, as the site contains absolutely nothing. And unlike FNAF World, which has been uh, blank for a very, very long time, I believe the last time we had something on FNAFWorld.com was the lead-up to uh, Freddy in Space 2 which was in 2019? And since then, you can see the site has just a blank black image. However, you go to scottgames.com, and the site, again, literally has nothing on it. So it's unclear what's gonna happen with the site as of right now, if it's gonna be used by the person who gets FNAF next, or if the site goes down, because Scott doesn't wanna, you know, pay for having the site up. I don't know. It's a little sad. Uh, again, this is the end of an era, but hopefully, 
we can have some good news very, very soon. Oh boy, was that a long news video. I apologize again. I've been gone for like the entire month. We haven't had a FNAF news video since I think it was like the 3rd of June. And again, we still have more news to talk about. Jonah Chrome and One Night at Fun Piece 3, basically the entirety of the Fanverse initiative. What's happening with that now that Scott has retired? We got news on the Puppet Carver, and I'm sure at some point I'll get out that news video about FNAF Plus. But that's it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I hope you have a very, very fantastic rest of your day, and I'll see you all on the flip side.